couple of nano style units sitting here and uh, blinking away unremarkably. The right hand one has a pot here and if I rotate the pot anti-clockwise then the frequency of the blinking increases. But look what's happening on the left hand side. Same. And if I rotate clockwise the blinking slows down on the right hand side and correspondingly on the left hand side. Interesting little units these guys. Let's get up close and take a look. This is an Arduino Nano. Well it's a clone of an Arduino Nano and a pretty useful device it is as well. This is a module called uh, NRF24L01 and it is a form of communication between two devices that doesn't involve Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And it also has some impressive features when it comes to range and energy usage. It would be nice to combine these two. You can by connecting them up, but uh, if you could somehow, I don't know, is there any magic? Maybe yellow wand magic. So the RF Nano, well it's a combination of the Nano that we know in the same form factor and that module, the NRF24 L01, tacked onto the end. So how useful uh, it will be, uh, I'm not really sure. One of the interesting things is, well the first thing which uh, stumped me was uh, the nature of this chip. Let's get a closer look. Well there it is. Can you see any markings on that? Uh, neither can I. The seller says that it's not a 328P, but the LGT8F328P, which is the clone of same. So, hmm, first thing is, can we communicate with it? So, uh, to save all the suspense, uh, I don't know that this is an LGT8F328P. If it is, then with all the libraries in the universe and a day of mucking around, I can't communicate with it. So in some sort of weird um, <laughs> like fit, I decided, you know what, I'll just treat it as an ordinary nano and uh, that shouldn't work, right? So, uh, and in particular, when I load up nanos, I normally choose the old bootloader processor, but I went straight with the Atmega 328P. So this should not work. And uh, this is just the blinky, so I'm just going to up, compile and upload the normal Blinky and let's choose the right port to start with. There it is. And now let's try and upload. And you can see the blinking lights there, that's fine. Uh, so it has actually uploaded, but it's not really blinking uh, in terms of one second on and one second off, which is your standard Blinky. So I'm able to communicate with it, that's great but uh, a little concerned about the timing. And uh, what might be useful at this stage is to maybe choose something like, I don't know, 50 or 100 uh, milliseconds. So let's say if it's 50 milliseconds, what's that, about uh, 20 hertz, and, uh, and see what we're actually getting out of it. So I've changed the blink sketch to be five milliseconds on and five milliseconds off. And uh, you can just see that uh, pulsing away there. Uh, and that should be 10 milliseconds for the entire cycle. Uh, so that's 100 cycles per second, 100 hertz. And we're getting 25 hertz on the old handy dandy frequency counter slash crystal tester, which I think Pile of Stuff has just received in a mailbag. So I'll put that up there for you to have a look at. Uh, pretty handy thing to have on the bench from time to time. Um, so that's at 5 milliseconds. Let's test this at, let's say, 1 millisecond and, uh, and see if we can't reproduce it. All right, so let's change that 5 to a 1 and we'll upload using the standard 328. Okay, so 1 millisecond on and 1 millisecond off should be a 2 millisecond cycle. 50 per, so that's 500 we should be getting. 500 hertz and we're getting 124-ish, three-ish. So again, one quarter of the expectation. So if this chip is uh, supposed to be a 328P standard, 
It will be running at, I think, 16 uh, megahertz. Uh, this is possibly running at four. So in order to communicate with it perhaps a little better, make sure my timing is right for the radio side of this, I need to write a boards.txt entry, uh, which reflects the fact that it's only running at four uh, megahertz, apparently. <laughs> Let's do that. So here's the boards.txt file. And uh, this is the nano section, and you can see there that the uh, the build.fcpu uh, is at 16 megahertz. And all I've done is I've created a new entry here. So there's our normal at mega328 entry, which would inherit that build fcpu speed. And underneath I've created one called at mega3284. And you can see in there that this is now um, not 16 megahertz, but I've just changed that to four. So uh, the next thing to do is to start up the um, Arduino. So let's do that. And uh, we will load that up. Well, it's not starting up. Let's try that again. Here we go. Thought it was being a bit sluggish, even on this old computer. All right, so let's have a look at this. So, all right, let's just do change this again to one second or one microsecond, one millisecond. I'll get it right eventually, and we'll change this to the output is two on the nano, and the important one is ah, there you go. So there's the at mega three to eight, and there's the four megahertz theoretical version of that. Okay, so what I'm expecting to happen, first it'd be nice if it uploads um, and doesn't explode anything, but secondly, this one to five-ish should change to 0.5-ish, and then we know that that was the problem, and that is the speed. So there it is. And that's pretty close, 0.479. I mean, there's gonna be a little bit of losses here, with um, with the code itself, but I'm actually um, pretty happy with that. So, okay, so how unusual is that? So that is not a an Atmega 328 chip. Um, it's quoted as an LGT8F328P. I don't think it is. I mean, I'm yet to be convinced uh, because I'm not able to talk to it with all the libraries that are available for that chip. But if I pretend it's a 328, and if I change it to four megahertz, we can talk to it, which means we may be able to do some radio stuff with it. Pretty cool. Now, the crazy, crazy thing was to find a library that worked with this RF Nano. Now, if you go by what you find online, for instance, you could go to something like this site uh, and various versions of it, then you'll find some code there's one for the emitter and there's also one for a receiver and then you've got all of this weird and wonderful stuff to uh to add to it and you can see also it hasn't been developed in the last three years but i went with that and it caused um yeah no end of upset so it didn't really work at all uh crazily what i was able to send was the um the number of bytes, but not a byte value. So um, that was quite strange. So avoid that and instead look for uh, this site here. Now what I've done is I've actually put that at the top of this code and this code will be on the blog so you can check it out yourself. But from here, uh, just scrolling down, there's a lot of good information and also links obviously to a GitHub, but it's got simple tx and simple rx and that's how i started and um, that allowed me to at least get some um, communication between these two but there's still a couple of weird and wonderful things that i wasn't able to quite solve for instance when it was sending this one here sends data to send is an array called message zero which is actually a character and the receiving uh, is the same so data received 10 and it says this must match the data to send in the transmission and then also in this code uh, it's got this 
um, radio read and data received, size of data received, and so forth. I wasn't getting much joy with that. So my version is that the data itself um, is just a byte. So data to send is a byte. And then on the receiving side, um, I've got it as an array. Okay, so it's, it's a single uh, array and it's a byte value. And then when we come down to the actual uh, receiving, um, then this is the code that, uh, that worked for me. So there was a bit of fiddling around and uh, your mileage may vary, but that's what worked for me. I'd like to extend this to multiple bytes um, because I think you know, it gives you a bit more flexibility if you can, let's say, have a couple of bytes at least or perhaps even up to an integer le length, which is four bytes. And uh, I'll work on that. But because it took a day or so to, uh, to get it to actually work, um, then that was, um, it was just good for me to be able to get the single byte to be coming across. The, um, the other interesting thing are these pins here. So there are different versions of the RF Nano out there. And some people uh, are getting mileage by changing the 910 to 109 and also even to 78. So they actually look at their device and they trace uh, the traces from the chip uh, and then they figure out which pin it's actually connected to. So that is crazy. So um, be prepared that if this code doesn't work, uh, then to change these around until it does. And in fact, uh, there is some code associated with the library uh, which allows you to check to see if there's actually any communications. Um, and so that's pretty good. Um, probably the last little bit here was that I wanted... Uh, it's a sort of a, a, a cheat's way of getting uh, different threads of the program running. So some, some, some form of sort of fake multitasking. So in order to do that, both the sending and the receiving have these um, current milliseconds, previous milliseconds, uh, transfer interval milliseconds, and LED milliseconds, and uh, something similar on the receive. And uh, let's just have a look at the receive side. For instance, how does this work? Well, at the start of the, uh, the loop cycle, it just takes a reading of what is the current milliseconds. And, uh, and then it says if the current milliseconds minus the previous milliseconds is greater than the blink delay, then we need to actually blink. And it switches to uh, a separate function called switch LED, which basically says if the LED is on, switch it off. And if the LED is not uh, on, then switch it on. So that's basically it. Uh, and then it'll only do that when this condition is met. So everything else is happening in the background. That's what gives it the illusion of a multitasking uh, little processor. And then I also found that uh, because um, I had to put in a little while loop here and, and, and said, look, if I'm just getting gibberish from the other side, uh, then just keep trying. But in the meantime, because that can soak up a bit of time, just check to see if, the, um, if we've reached the blink delay as well. So again, there's a little bit of multitasking, well, you know, fake multitasking going on here uh, while that's happening. Yeah, and uh, this is another weird one, um, and it, it genuinely does make a difference. Um, when I'm uh, showing the data, um, yeah, which is basically saying, you know, um, setting the data to be false and listening again for the next bit, it's a, an, a little delay after the stop. Uh, listening and a little bit and well actually to have a stop listening in there to start with put a delay afterwards and then start listening in a little bit of delay and that gives you a reliability of transfer that was a lot of fiddling around to um, to get that to work but um, but it actually does work so yeah I'll put all of this code online um, on the blog it'll probably change in, uh, in due courses I keep fiddling around but at this stage I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy probably the final thing I'd like to do is have a little bit of a uh, test of that antenna on the device and, uh, and maybe s just see if I can get it to go uh, you know, line of sight with an antenna I'd, I'd be happy with 80 or 100 metres um, so uh, we'll try that out um, but uh, let's, uh, let's see how that goes Right near the antenna, uh, there's a little switch.
which is a zero ohm jumper and uh, you need to switch that around if you want to use the external antenna. There's no actual documentation on that in anything that I've seen, but it's pretty common to do that if you're shifting from uh, an integrated antenna to an external antenna to swap that that little jumper around from, in this case, orientation going across the board to going down the board. Uh, and if you follow the traces, you can see that pretty clearly. And then uh, also what I've done on this one, which is the... Um, this is the one which I'm going to be used to be uh, receiving. Uh, I've just put a slightly bigger globe on here, a uh, little LED, I think it's about a 3 watt, uh, switching from a MOSFET, so you should be able to see that uh, at night time. So the foreground is a transmitter and the background is the receiver. Let's uh, slow up that frequency a little bit. Okay, so that's working pretty well. Uh, I'd have to say that the external antenna has been a little bit of a disappointment. I think I was getting better value out of the integrated one, so I'm going to go back to that and have a look at the code and maybe have a look at the type of uh, antenna that I'm using as well. But uh, that is the circuit working for this week. We'll see you next time.